This is a community that I want to build up on authenticity. This is a community that I want to build up on love. Uh, this is a community that I want to build up on empathy. And, you know, this is part of the movement. Um, I talk about Bernie Sanders a lot. I talk about the movement and, you know, the revolution. Um, and I'm very much a part of that. And I am very much a part of this, this global spiritual awakening. And, you know, some of you all are going to be attracted to some of the woo, because <laughs> uh, inevitably I cannot separate myself from some of the woo. There's just some magical shit that I've experienced that I, I am not willing to just throw in a box of a drug experience. Uh, and then there is also some shit where, you know, I'm pretty scientific and realist and, um, and I like to think I'm pretty practical, especially when it comes to politics on terms in terms of what we need to fight for and how we need to do it. Um, and so hopefully some of that will attract some people too. Um, some of that stuff is going to turn some people off, but I hope that my political views does not turn you off from some of the other things that I say that is not related to that. However, it is my worldview. So, you know, I'm telling you straight up, I... I'm somebody who believes in healthcare for all. I believe in ending endless wars. I believe in investing in our infrastructure. I believe in uh, improving the lives of everyday people and just giving people a fair shot. I'm not looking for equal outcome. I just want true equal opportunity. And we know that the system is rigged in a way that that is not possible. So that's what I'm for. I don't really like labels. Um, you know, I don't. I don't think that they're useful. I think everybody has a different meaning of a label. So I don't want to label myself. You know, to me, I believe in those things. I think I am very similarly in line with a FDR mentality in terms of how to deal with uh, things. And um, FDR saved capitalism back in the day. So, you know, if you're a capitalist, um, that's totally fine. Just understand that there is a point where you're going to have to make some modifications. Otherwise, you know, the guillotines are going to come out. And I'm not saying this because I want it. I'm saying it because, like, you can't you can't keep doing it the way that true capitalism is designed because it inevitably leads to a point where people are ready to fucking storm the, <laughs> you know, they're ready to storm, like, the suburbs, you know, the, the gated communities. And so, you know, as a, as a rich person or as a wealthy person, you should know that it's in your best interest to make sure that that doesn't happen, that it doesn't get to the point where everything's fucking crazy and chaos. Uh, in order to do that, some changes are going to need to be made. We can't have the same wealth distribution. We can't have the billionaires adding, you know, what is it, like $800 billion in wealth that was generated just for the 1% in the last who knows how many years. You know, that's, I think it was like last 10 years or something. That's terrible. I mean, Clearly, we can't have it where the 1% who are already really wealthy getting another $800 billion more than they were previously getting when they already were stacking the deck ridiculously in their favor. And when you have money in America, you know, it makes it easier to make more money. I mean, it just is what it is. When you have more capital, you can generate more capital, you know, especially with things like the stock market, you can make a shit ton of money from literally doing nothing. You literally can just be like, I think that stock's going to go up. And then you just made fucking 40 grand in a day, you know, just because you had 10 grand to play with. Um, and that to me is where that's where the wealth gap gets so large is because people can just, once you start getting it, you can just run up the score. And that's how you get somebody like a Mike Bloomberg, who's got fucking $60 billion and is able to blow damn near a billion of it uh, to get humiliated on stage, <laughs> you know? So, so to me, that is part of my worldview. I can't divorce that from how I view things because I grew up in a household that, um, started out in what I would call the middle class. You know, my parents were never insanely wealthy, right? They, they had enough money where we were living okay. And my mom didn't have to work. Now, I think there was a point where a lot of people's, you know, parents didn't, you know, didn't have to be a two income household, but that fell through very quickly. And then my parents were a two income household and were struggling to get by. So I know exactly what it's like for good people who are trying to work. They're not lazy. They're trying to work hard or they're working jobs and they're doing everything they can to try to make ends meet and put food on the table. And, you know, it's not fair. And I know that life doesn't have to be fair, but it's not 
why should it be unfair when it's fixable? You know, like to me, there are certain things that it's like, we don't have to, we don't have to like, just give everybody everything. That's not even what we're proposing here. You just need to make some minor tweaks to the system and not minor tweaks. Like some things, you know, completely need to be overhauled. You know, obviously campaign finance needs complete reform, uh, lobbyists and their influence on government. You know, there's certain things that you just need to rip out the whole fucking route. But then there are other things that it's like you don't need to make it that drastic to ha- make a dramatic improvement on some people's lives. So to me, we need a modified version of capitalism at best. Like that's like at the very minimum, that is what we need to do in order to keep, you know, sustaining this life. Um and I just want to see more people have the chance to do that because when you give people uh, a way to get out of that bare minimum survival mode, they are able to self-actualize, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If somebody's already got the roof over their heads, they're paying their bills, they're going, you know, they're, they're, they got their education, um, they're going to work, they're doing whatever, they have health care, then all they have to worry about is bettering themselves and paying attention to, you know, what they're doing and spending the time how they want, making families, whatever, right? If you care about those things, then we got to make it easier <laughs> because we're making it very hard for some people in this country that didn't do anything wrong and are good people and just want to live. Um, and I think we just need to give more people a chance to want to live.